Good morning, everyone. Are we ready for class two? We're already at class two. Can you believe this? Now, just give me a few minutes. I'm just going to set us up the best I can um, so I can give you, like, the best view, if you know what I mean. <gasps> I was very bonds wise. Um, so I hope you are all re 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 raring to go today, so to speak. I know I am. It's exciting. It's very cool. So how's everyone's babies going? Um, hopefully in the last week, you know, everyone got under control and got started um, or finished for their lesson one. Uh, here is my baby, uh, which I have, we have now named. His name is going to be Emerson. Emerson. So cute. Um, so anyway, Emerson is um, got under control. I have heard a, from a few of you during the week and um you know i've had pictures of babies um just to let you know if you're feeling like your work is a little bit pale um you're you're welcome to go over and do another layer of what you've been doing you don't have to be shy about that it's obviously a bit harder to go the other way if your paint's too dark <clears throat> so hello forever ever but you all know that i am glad that you are here and welcome um to lesson number two you need one of these shirts to do your painting? Pretty cool, eh? You love my videos. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Um, so if anyone comes on here today and they've got a question, please put the capital letter Q with a little line and maybe then your words in bold beside it. That'll be the best way for me to see how we're going. Um, also, let me know if it's buffering. Um, I've turned pretty much everything off except right in front of me, across behind you, I've got another computer there so Teacup can see your questions. Um, but if it does buffer or keep buffering, something like that, we'll have to shut that down because it must be taking too much internet. At the, not, at the moment, it's buffering already. Ugh. So just let me know. I'm, I'm not fully started yet. So before we fully start, if anyone's having a buffering problem, let me know and I'll shut that computer down. It seems a bit odd because the computer's been working so great all week. Kathy said, hi, Annette. Loving your videos. I'm learning so much. I'm so glad, Kathy. I've had some beautiful pictures these this week of the babies people are working on. Some people are going ahead and that's okay. Um, but it's been really nice to see people's work, that's for sure. Just a little bit. Seems good. It's not buffering. Okay, thanks, Kenda. Uh, thanks, Brandy. Charlie said, good here. Okay. You're just watching today. Deb, I know you're going to catch up. Good morning, Angela. Holly, question. Can you put air dry paints over heat set paints? Well, actually, I'm doing a little bit of a myth buster with that at the moment. Angela knows what I'm doing and I'm running a bit behind on it. Um, but I'm actually doing a test where I've painted heat set paints and I've painted air dry paints on the other side of a testing limb and I'm trying to do a test with that. Um, I have been told it doesn't work. Um, uh, for, there's a few different reasons I won't get into right now, but putting the air dry on top of heat set doesn't work. Um, it will scratch off, apparently. Um, but so far, like on the test I've been doing, I've been sort of working with it and I've had no problems yet. So I would say if you've got a, a kit and it's you know not really up to scratch and it's got heat set paint on it, and you're not too worried about how it's going to turn out, I would give it a go um, because I put the air dry over the heat set and so far it's okay. Um, I just suggest that the kit is nice and clean um, and free from any chemicals before you do that or any you know oils of our fingers. Thanks Beach Baby. Hi Maribet. Hope I said that right. YouTube has been acting up on all lives okay this here's my shirt that's my logo this is the shirt that i wear all the time when i go to um doll shows obviously because i'm selling the product so so people know who i am but i thought today i'd do it thank you so much mary i appreciate that and thank you for your congratulations brandy said i have done air dry on heat set but i haven't scratched it though yeah, I've sort of been, you know, because I'm doing the test, I'm able to scratch it with my fingers a bit. Hey, Joanne, how are you? I miss you. 
Yes, congratulations on the sex of my grandbaby. Now, before I go ahead, I promised a few people who weren't on my Facebook, Instagram, that I would show them the picture of my grandbaby quickly before we get started. Now, look, you got to look past the image to really see uh, this baby. This is my grandson, um, who we found out for sure yesterday was a grandson. But if you look at him, look at his little chubby cheeks down here and his little nose and mouth, and you can even see the shape of his eyes and his eyebrows. And Jeannie said to me that she thinks he's got lots of hair, so that's just what she thinks. But I think he's so cute. I know I'm biased. You know, people say, oh, you're just biased, it's your grandson. But I really think that is the cutest picture I've ever seen. It's so cute. So thank you, everyone, for your well wishes on that. Um, uh. Oh, wow, that was lovely. My son has just texted me and said, are you going okay? Sorry. Children get in the way, don't they? But he had a, he went to school a little bit grumpy this morning. He is cute already, isn't he? All right. So we're going to get to it. There's more people here now. Teacup, when you're ready, you can come out and join us. Mm. Thank you so much, everyone, for your congratulations. And don't forget, you know, from in she's 20 weeks. At 30 weeks, we're going to be starting our Belly Watch, which will be one live stream a week, just with nice relaxation music going, just watching her belly to try to look for kicks. Then we've got the birth, which I'll do live stream, whether it's, you know, her in labor or afterwards. It won't be the birth birth. And then we've got live baby watch where we watch the baby sleep and everything. So you can come along with this journey with me. All right, so Teacup is here now. And she has got um, the computer in front of her. So if anyone's got any questions, you can do the letter Q and the capital is behind it so she can see it. Now, don't forget, this is the first baby she is making as well. Oh, thank you, Maria. That's so lovely of you. I appreciate that. Mwah. Thank you for your appreciation. Talwika said you could almost pick a look-alike kit from that one. I know, right? It is a great pick. Jeannie said, has she felt the little guy move? Yes, she has. She's felt, she actually woke up yesterday morning to two big punches, so that was funny. Oh, it's not touch screen. <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to talk about that anymore because we're not about here about that today. Um, but if anyone wants to talk more about that, you can come to my live stream on Friday because that's when I yap about that heaps. But eight minutes in, I've got to get you guys going so we can get on to this baby. Oh, no, that you wouldn't believe, Maria, that is more than enough. Honestly, that really, you know, is awesome. It is awesome. So um, I don't need a lot. It hi. just helps. Teacup says hi. Okay, so can I have your baby head for a minute? So Teacup is making her first baby as we go along. So this is her baby. Isn't he good? Oh, it's good. It's a girl. We called him a boy last week too, didn't yes. we? But it's definitely a girl because it's got the body. Um, but, you know, I wanted to, you know, reinforce that so you all guys know that this is the first baby she's ever made. She hasn't um, watched me paint. She's never watched anything like that. Um, it's just completely her learning for the first time. So um, it's awesome. Uh, so just to let you know, if, you, if you're a beginner and you, it's your first baby too, if you have any questions for Teacup, feel free to ask her um, <coughs> because she won't show a face on, you know, she's a hidden secret, but she'll definitely talk, but she doesn't want to laugh. Can't make her laugh today. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Hi, Beach Baby Reborn. <laughs> so she's here, but first baby ever. So this is going to be very exciting as well because obviously I've made lots and lots of babies. Um, but to see someone right from the start um, working along with this is awesome as well. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to answer anyone's questions anymore. I'm just going to get into it. And if there is any questions, you can ask Teacup. But remember, she's painting as well, so she won't. She'll be trying to focus on the baby. Okay, so... She'll try to look up from time to time if she can. Thank you so much, Julia, also for sharing everything today. She'll be sharing my event page about this. Uh, so if anyone wants to share their parts, uh, she'll also be sharing my GoFund. If anyone wants to, you know, donate towards my GoFund, which is for me in these lessons, nothing is, you know, you don't have to do. And also my website for anyone who wants to get anything. 
Okay, so let's get started. So first we're going to work with the Thylo Blue. Um, now I didn't bring my heat set paints out here today, which is probably a bit silly, um, but that's okay. If you're working with heat set paints, I'm just going to shake this gently while we're sitting here, because you should also always mix these air dry paints when you start. Um, so if you're working with heat set paints, you're going to either need your ultramarine blue or your thylo um, blue, which will be like this kind of colour. So just your dark blue is what you're looking for. Um, and obviously your odorless solvent. So I'll try to work with you as we're going the best I can. Um, just checking I've got everything I need here. You'd think I would know, hey, right? No. So anyway... When we're working with this, I'm going to put the, the screen down as well. Let's see if I can get this down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, that should be good. All right. So just have your little paint palette. Um, now, I did start last week by working with your little ceramic dishes, but they're not good uh, for sizing-wise. Um, Rebun on the Sun said, what colours are you using today? Just keep watching and you'll see. It's basically... Um, the thylo blue, red, and then the vein colour. All right, so um, someone last week, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was because I get so many messages, but she emailed me and reminded me to let you guys know that when it came to the pipette and the sizing, it's not like 20 mil that I said I had to go in there, it's like 2 mil because this one it says 20, you know, it says 2. Why did I even say that? It says 15, but that's 1.5 mil. Oh. So uh -huh. she, she um, told me that, and I did a test with it. I actually got um, a medicine jar, and I filled it with 30 mil of water and tried to pour it in here, and it went over. It was supposed to be 20, we worked out. but So I did 20, 2 mil, and that was fine. Okay. So that's 2 mil of water that goes in there. So just for anyone. But if you have any questions and you're confused by that, because I probably didn't explain it properly, just ask me later. So anyway, with this, we're going to use four drops of the Magical Realism Blue. Um, if you're working with um, heat set, uh, if you're working with heat set, I would tell you to just get, <coughs> you can use that, you can so use you this one. used three mil in that one and I used two mil in mine. I think so. I think so. so let's have a look. Do three. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, do three. Sorry. And um, when it comes to your paints, um, with the heat set, I just want you to do like get your little jar and do one side swipe of one side of blue and put it in your little paint palette hole and then fill it with the solvent. When you're working with air dry, you can just chuck it there. Um, so we're doing four blue and four of the thinning. This one. Yep. Now Teacup just said before she's using a, she's using three drops um, because her paint wells are a little bit smaller than mine. So um, I'll just measure that again so we can confirm that. And you might want to confirm yours too. Can you just get me one of those little ceramic bowls behind me? Is it just, oh, yep. So just confirm that the size wise this this little well takes on <coughs> see like that's two mil already and one. So that's like thirty thirty it's not it's not thirty mil, it's three mil. So three mil, but I would do two mil in there because I've already got my other colours in there the colour. So I'll be doing two, so you might even want to do 1.5 or something. You can test that if you want by putting water in it. Um, Alright, so without confusing everyone again, she's her because her little paint palette is a little bit smaller wells than me, she's decided to do a little bit of a different um, measurement. But if you've got one of these regular paint wells that everyone has, you should be fine. Okay, so that was four drops of blue and four drops of thinning. And just mix it together. Nothing special, just mix it together. And then add your water to fill up the well. Now water-wise, that should be two mil of water going in there. 
there is the water. Have you done thinning yet? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I don't put this in there. Just over there or behind the computer or something. Okay, so I've got a paper towel here. And I've also got my my little um, testing limb here. Now I'm going to just get a cosmetic wedge because just for wipe up purposes. Um, now this, what I should let you all know, this part that we're doing now is we're, we're colouring the blue in the nose, ear and mouth <coughs> or any area that looks a little bit down as such, like that should be dark. It does too. It does too. I apologise. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry. Look at that. That is really terrible. How dumb of me. I didn't follow my own book, so I've got to change that. <laughs> it probably will work out the, the same, but just for reference sake, thank you, Heidi. Chuck that on the ground. You can use that again if you like. I'm going to do that. If, if you look at my book, if you're going through my book, I'm sorry. It has four drops of thin uh, blue, four drops of thinning, and then ten drops of water. So I'm going to go back the way I actually did it. So there's four blue. There's four thinning. And now 10 drops of water. Let's see where that takes us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You do have to be patient because if you're not patient, uh, it'll just squirt out everywhere. So thanks again for that save, Heidi. So that has actually taken it to half of that well. Thank you very much, Heidi. Um, so now with my testing limb, if you don't have a testing limb, you can simply use paper towel. But I'm going to just do a little bit of a test. How many drops do I do? I do 10. That's fine with that because it doesn't matter about, you know, we're not trying to fill the well, so to speak. So I'm just doing a test of what this is going to look like um, once I put it on. So there's the blue like that. And if I was to blend that with my blending brush, I need to look at what it's going to come up like. So what you need it to look like is just pretty much like that. Um, you don't want it too dark. It's just to be like a light hue of blue so if you can imagine if i go across and do the nose nose section there now and if it's too dark it'll just look too much um now once again that's good once again it is completely up to you so um if you don't like a baby that's got too much bluing on it then you're best to add like a couple more drops of water in at this stage it is completely focused on what you really think um, so I'm going to just do that again to see that that's exactly the blue I like. Just imagine I'm going to do it under here and I want a bit of blue under the little toes there. And I'm going to just pounce in there and see what it looks like. So not, not forgetting that we're going to have a lot of layers on that. So you've got to really look at it and think, mm, is it too blue? I'm actually going to add another drop for that one because I don't want this baby having too much dark blue in it. Well, do you like that colour blue? I don't know. Like basically it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to be, see her blue, that is quite good. Yeah, I think that's really good. It's... It's like an undertone and then we're even going to add some red on top of that which will bring out like a blood, more of a blood tone to it. So okay. I think that's fine. I just wanted to go a little bit, little bit lighter, just like a teeny, teeny smidge. Okay, no other messages on there at the moment? No? All good. Good morning, Lorraine. <coughs> okay, so with, with this blue we're going to work um, with a couple of different brushes, um, mainly 
this brush but I'll also use my thin brush and something like this I've normally got like lots and lots of brushes around so <laughs> I know I'm being confusing at the moment but use whatever you think really um, so let's say firstly I want to get into the ears section there so um, just mainly in that tiny part of the ear down there um, with this particular blue that I'm working on now I'm going to put it in the ears and in the nostrils and in the mouth that's the first step I'm going to do and then we're going to come on a little bit later and put some <coughs> red on top of that which will like I said give it that blood sort of tone so I'm just going to work with this thin brush at the moment if you've got like a lip lip um, flat shader or something like that that might be good as well but just basically because I don't want to spread it everywhere just mix your paint like I always say um, um, for those of you working with heat set paints just again use your testing limb or your paper towel do it on your paper towel or test them in first and then get a blending brush and blend it out. Okay, so just with your brush, just paint inside your deepest parts of the creases of your ear. So you can go over the creases we did earlier. Just all your deep cavern type places. Once you go into those dark, deep places, get your blending brush and just pounce on. It won't be like really, really full on. It'll just give it that dark, darkened look. Just a slightly darkened look. A little bit more. You want to just see a hint of blue. Just a hint of blue in there. And that will be all you need. So I'll go over to the other side now. Just make sure you're doing it in the deep points. And you don't have to exactly go over every spot. Um, when you're blending it, that will sort of blend that blue into that area. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. So now I just blend that. Now at this point too, you're probably better to actually have a blending brush that is just for blue. You see that I was using this for red. Um, it is good to have one for each colour. So you can see how that's already, it's just given that definition now. Just the darkening that looks like that is deeper than the outer edges. Just a little deeper look. Yep, that's good. We'll just give it that deeper look. Question, do you have to have the thinner or work water just work? Water will just work, um, but I find with the thinner, it sort of, it helps it settle more. It helps it like adhere a little bit better. Um, you'll notice that like with this particular um, colour we're doing, that if I do, let's say I did it on my testing limb here and just did a line. I don't know if that's actually showing, but you can see it sort of beads a little bit, just a little bit of beading, and that's what the water will do. Um, but the thinning, it doesn't make it bead as much. Um, and I just feel it settles and holds better to the skin. Um, but a lot of people just use water and they've had great success. It's probably a little bit more so that I just, I have it and I want to use it and I do know that it really helps it stick better okay so also now with your blue always mixing as you're going just get in those nostrils there so just I'm just using this brush that's fine just doing some spots in the center of the nose there see just some spots there absolutely just spots and then again with your blending brush don't go too hard because you don't want the blue to sort of go out out of the nostril too much I normally just hold my blender really tight and I just press in there lightly and that will just allow it to sort of blend in that 
little section. And see how now it looks like his nostrils are deeper. It's just given it that deeper look, which is obvious. You know, without that bluing, I, wish, I don't have a spare kit here at the moment, but without that bluing, it wouldn't give that look of it being deep and in a hole, so to speak. Yep, that's good. <coughs> okay, now if you've got an open mouth like I have with this little boy here, you'll need to sort of sort of squeeze it out, so to speak. I like to sort of get in, get inside and push it out. If you don't have a deep mouth, just go along that centre crease of the mouth, like the, the line with where the lips meet. And see, see how it's like given that, like you I open my mouth, right? It's dark in there. It's like there's a cave in there. And that's what gives that look, that bluing. So now it looks like he's got a slightly open mouth. So you can do a little bit more of that if you like, just inside the mouth. Don't forget this is your baby, so it's how you want it to look. So if you um, like it to be darker, you can add more, but I don't. I suggest not adding too much more. Mm. It looks retarded. No, it doesn't look retarded. <coughs> Do you think it looks retarded? No, it doesn't. That's fine. You might want to get in there and like push it out. Like, go like this with your leg up and so you can get in there a little bit more. And just when you're blending it, hold that brush at the end so it doesn't... See how I've got a little bit on the yeah, lip the, there? That yeah. So to stop that, it's holding it nice and tight. And so it doesn't um, spread. We don't want it to spread too much. <laughs> Can't get it. You are right? No. It does work. That's why I use my leg up so it holds us. <laughs> She's trying to put a leg up now like, like a dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, so now um, those are those three points where I really like to focus on the darkening. But there is other points and you can make those up yourself, literally. But I'm going to work with you with them now. But those are the three top bluing sort of marks. Now we also notice when um, a baby often has like bluing, you know, in their eyes here. Um, sometimes they can have it around, whoops around their no nose on the outside here. Um, so those are the next two places I'm going to go. Just make sure your paint is mixed, like I said. And this one you want to kind of work fast with. Um, I um, like to, my blending brush, make sure that there's no excess blue on it by wiping it on the paper towel. And then I literally, just in those areas where I want a bit of blue, sometimes you can even go over the bridge of the nose, which is nice. I'm just going to go a line over that like that. So I've got a crease there. Would and blend quickly. Crease? What's that? Would I put that in the crease there? Or? Yeah, you can do that. So see, it's just that light bit of blue just there. Now, blues are always your deeper point. Question from Karen, okay. Um, Karen, would you put blue inside there? Mm -hmm. Can you use the air dry paints all over the heat side paints? Okay, you can um, and you can't. I'm doing some testing with that at the moment. A lot of people say it doesn't work and it makes it easier to scratch off. That'll have to be a to be continued on that question. I'm doing some tests at the moment. <coughs> um, I do advise anyone to give it a go. Um, but obviously don't give it a go with the kit that you adore. And Edie said, do you put the blue inside the head? No, I don't. I don't do that at all. I used to do that. That used to be something we did in the beginning um, <coughs> part of Reborning. Um, it gave it like a blue hue from the inside, but it really makes no difference anymore. Um, and I don't, I don't suggest wasting your time on it. 
Heidi? Where's Heidi says? says, what if you got blue around the nostrils? Okay, well, you just need to go really, really careful with that. That's why I say hold your brush tight and sort of just pounce in the nostril really careful. If it does have blue around the outside, you can get your little cosmetic wedge and you can sort of just try to wipe it off the best you can. Air dry paints won't really allow you to do that too quickly. But also at this stage, it's not the end of the world. The next um, actual colour we're going to be doing is yellow. Why don't I have my yellow out here? Um, you need it. Yeah, if you can get me a little bottle of yellow. Um, the next one we're going to be doing with yellowing, and yellowing is your higher point. So we can put a little bit of yellowing over that blue to sort of bring that out. But, but don't fret and don't freak out if you do get a little bit outside the nostrils. We can sort of repair that. Okay, so yes, like I said, the blue parts are like any parts that are low points, your deeper parts. Um, so they, they you want to, thank you very much, they are what you want to use for even like when you see, see how here we can see that there is a deep, a deep sort of like depth there, a little dip. I can go on that part and just put a little bit of blue there and blend it. And look at that. I don't know if you can see it like I can, but it just gives that little bit of definition there. This is actually my favorite part of reborning when I'm doing those key feature points um, because you can really bring out um, what the artist, the sculptor, has wanted. Um, like there's even a little bit of uh, dip there in that phonical part there. So I'll just put that there, blend it out. And see you, how you can see that more now, but it is translucent. So take up just any part that you see that is a low point. They can be. <laughs> oh, across the yeah. On this one. So so what with that? Um, she's got some low points just across the front here. So I would be telling her, and I'll do one here, to just um. It is good to use a small brush for that because you don't want a lot of paint. Just do a little quick line there, nothing major. And then blend it. So that's all she needs to do. Just a quick line and blend. So you'll do a quick, like a little dot here, blend. little dot here, blend. And a little line here and blend. So yeah, this will really bring out those little key feature points for you. He's obviously got that little dip in the side here. So just a little bit of blue there. And blend. Now, this one up the top here, I, I did more, a couple of lines of blue. So you can see it's come out more of a blue shade. It's, it's a bigger area. But if you just have small areas, you shouldn't do much. Just a couple of little lines of blue. Um, I like a little bit down in here. It looks a little bit like it's depthy in there. So on that side. on that side so you can see it's just that small part now you can see I've got a little blue outside on his lip there I'm not concerned a lot of babies have a little bit of blue on their lip but as I go and I'm adding you know the red and the other colors I can make that slightly disappear but still be a part of his character which I do believe he's got that in his character now I'm looking at his eyes there and I'm looking about those two lines that are coming up here and I just think that they need to be featured it's part of what his kit looks like so you might not notice too much but that is just that slight darker now and I can make it darker still if I think oh, I'd like it a little bit darker see now you can see it even more can you see that teacup yeah. see how this side and it's only really light, and that's what you must, must, must have working for you. Um, that that blue is translucent. I mean, blue, when it comes to blue, it's really quite unforgiving. Um, if you do too much, it just, it's hard to go back from. But if you're doing it with the right translucency, it'll be fine. You can recorrect it later. 
But if it's too blue, you'll be turning it into a smurf. Okay, so you can <coughs> see those key features. Now under his eyes there, he's got some lines as well. You can choose whether you want to, if that, you know, how, what's the word, if, eventuate them? Essentu essentuate, essentuate. essentuate them. So I can choose to leave them the way they are, those lines, or I can choose to make them a little bit more of who he is. And that is where you get the same kit looking different, so different. So you can have four kits in a row done by four different artists and they can literally look so, so different. And that's because, you know, one artist might have accentuated those, those lines when the next artist may not have even worked on them at all. That's amazing. That is beautiful. It's got some depression around it. Do I yep. do that? You can if you want, if you want it to be a part of it. So if you think, oh, I don't really want to accentuate that look, it doesn't really impress me, you don't have to. Okay, because it comes up, how would I do it? Because it comes up like a... Just, you just do a line here. So she's asking about the depression here. She just do like, just literally a line like that, like a moon, and then blend it. Now, also, this baby, as you can see, has lots of crunched up looks <laughs> in, his, in her face. Um, you can really unfeature that by not bringing them to anyone's attention um, so um, we can make it look really scrunched up and grumpy but we can also make it look quite peaceful oh, by not essentiating them yep that makes him look fat by doing that so mm -hmm. just that sort of crescent moon sort of stage there also you know we've got like even though I've written drawn the creases on underneath here I can go over that crease again with the blue like that and make it look deeper as well. See, it just gives a little bit more, giving him a look like he's got that chub, chubby area down here, which is really, really cute. So take your time with this, and I'm sorry that this will take extra time on our live stream, but if you're here for the right reasons, you won't mind that. <laughs> Put two chins. I don't put it. I'd put one. Yeah, I'd just probably put one here because you might not see that. But I would do that as well. Okay. Do both. See, I love the benefit that you can just make totally make it your own. I love the benefit that I have in here, and I can just say, yeah. do I need to do this? Cheating. <laughs> nah, we all <coughs> cheat. Okay. Now. Just looking at all those other places I want to feature. I'll take up <laughs> dropping things on the ground. I'm just throwing it away, I don't need it. No, okay. You can even, like, if you wanted to feature, like, put a little blue in either side of the lips there. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to make him look like a sad, sorry, sad face. He's already got that there, and I think that's enough. Do we do around the back, that one? You can do around the back if you like, if that's what you want to accentuate. Like I've got this here, I could, this is going to be covered by hair, but if you're especially going for something bald, mm, this thing. then you can. Um, not so much that line, but sort of like just there type of thing, which you've already kind of done. Okay. Well, then that's done. Yeah. So if you're happy with that, then you need to move on to your legs. He's, he's coming alive, isn't it? Blue's not your friend. Blue can be, um, like I said, it can be really heartless. I'm going to put the head aside for a moment and go on to that one. It can be really heartless. That's why if you've got the right translucency, you can make it your friend. And if you're using a testing limb, like I said, like... See, I was able to test that blue in there under his toes and see if I actually liked it. Now, if I did that and it looked too dark, then I would definitely have put more um, water in there um, and I would have then tried it again in another spot, you know. So that's where your testing limb is so, so important. And if you don't have your testing limb, you need to use it on paper towel. Um, but with the paper towel, it's harder because you can't blend it and actually see what it looks like but you can see a translucency 
and um, I'll just put some on the paper towel for those who can't. You can see that that, that is slightly see-through, it's not a solid colour, if you know what I mean. So that's where that is important. Okay, so now when we go to, oh, he's just so cute. Holy crap. Oh, one more thing I wanted to do before I move on to the arms is I do like to put a little bit of bluing beside the nose. I do like that. So for that, I just come in and just do a little line just on the side of the nose there. Oops, shoot, I'm doing a teacup. And blend it. Okay, just a slight, slight, slight look. Because that you often see is darker. I'm going to look at this because I really want it to. <gasps> so pretty. Now I'm not sure how well you can see that. I wish you could see it better. Uh, for anyone who is um, obviously following this and you're on my event page, I will show the pictures of them closer up later which will really give you an idea I might also like to work in this little crack in that above that lip there just do a line there but yeah this is where I get really excited I love it look at the blue around its nose it's just so pretty did you yes I got it on the side of the crease instead of I know it's not it's fine. I don't want much blue. Can I just use this and do this? Yes, you definitely can. So she said, if I don't want much blue, can I just use the blending brush and sort of pounce that on a little bit more? And you can. Now also, don't freak out. If you get it a little bit dark, and you can see there's a little bit of darkness there. It's what I want, so it's fine. But you might think, oh my god, it's freaky, it's too deep. It's not. Once all the color, other colors go on, it'll like recorrect it, and sometimes you can't even see what blue you've done there. Thanks. Hmm. It's a bit unusual. Don't know why that is. Was it there when we got it out of the bag? Was it there when we started? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, she has got a little bit of a white spot on the side of her face there. Now, it could have been where it was leaning on each other in the bag because I put them in bags after, but we're going to keep an eye on that. We will be able to fix that. So if you ever have anything like that. So there we go with the face. Now I'm going to go to the hands. Uh, mine has fists. So because he's got fists, I've got that deep, deep look in that section of the fist there. Um, but if they've got open hands... I would just do a, like a spot of blue just in the middle there and blend that. And then you can you can do little blends in all of the other deeper points. Again, it's completely up to you. You're the artist and how you want it to look. So you can go in between the fingers if you want them to look a little bit deeper. See, it's just that smallest amount of blue in there and it will give it a deeper look. You need to get in like little crunchy crevices like that. Once again, you don't need to if you want to. I like to accentuate that. And then I like to accentuate like just, just at the beginning of those finger tips there. And I don't want it to spread out too much, so I'm going to hold my blending brush keep it together a little bit so it's not spreading too much so it's just sort of pinpointing in that area that's probably one of the biggest mistakes is when you don't hold your blending brush to account and it goes off and does its own thing when you don't want it to This little part here looks like it needs to be accentuated. So I'll just do that. Okay, then when we're looking at the rest of the hand or arm, other places I would go to, oh, I want to get into this little place here, so I might just draw in those creases. 
Yep, that's good. Just remember if you do, are doing any, any creases, you need to make sure that paint gets picked up. And if it doesn't and you see a little bit of paint in a crease, just get something like a fan brush or something else and just pick it up with that. So other deep points, uh, definitely I normally get sort of in this part of the um, elbow area and maybe in some deeper creases along the wrist there. But that's all you really need to do that. So I'm going to just go there. Don't forget to keep your brush at bay and make sure it doesn't go off and do its own thing too much. You can go slow if it if you feel. So I've just done a little bit of bluing there and you can see the bluing I've done here. Now you can also look at your um, limb from a distance and you can look at deep points. Now look at this deep point here. I can accentuate that if I want by just doing a little bit of a line of blue on. And it just will give a shadow. It's just giving a shadow there. Laurie Ward says mine has dimples on the elbows. Do I put blue there? Yes, perfect. <coughs> dimples on the elbow, you can put blue there. And guess what? If you don't have dimples on the elbow, you can literally, I won't do it with this one because I don't want it to, but let's pretend this had dimples. I can literally get my blue and just do a little dot like that. And then I can pounce it out carefully because you don't want it to spread, spread too much. And it will give, look, doesn't that look like a dimple now? It kind of looks like I've just given it a dimple. That's one thing, um, again, when you're an artist and you can make your own look by doing things like that. And that's just like when someone adds a scratch or, or a mole or something to the baby. You can do that just like you can add dimples. You can even do it on the face if you want, if you've got the right kind of face. All you'd have to do, say, on this face is do a little dot there and a little dot there and just blend it carefully. You don't want it to spread too much. Blend it carefully and you can literally give your baby that shadowing like it's got dimples. So good question, Laurie, I love that. Yes, and definitely you can put the dimple, um, the color in the knee. That's okay. Um, so just any way you want. I'm not wanting to do any more bluing on this arm. I'm happy with how it's gone. So I'm putting it over on the stand and going to the next one. So don't forget, after the class, you know, if you want to share your work with everyone, you can go on to the Facebook event or even on just to my Facebook page. Um, it doesn't matter. People will see it. And show everyone your lovely work. You know, don't be shy. There's many beginners here. And, um, you know, we're all there to also help each other. Um, you know, being positive and, you know, showing off your work and being proud is quite a good part of the journey when you're working with reborns there's many people who you know don't take part in something like this and and you know struggle so you're taking that step to move forward so again you can see how that looks deeper looking deeper again I have to say I just love doing this blue layer and how it can really make make the baby um, some people just go with these first few layers and they stop after that because they're happy but um, I assure you by going ahead your baby might look good at that stage but it will look better by keeping on going with it now as you see I'm only doing little spots there I'm not I'm not going overboard look at the tiny little spot I did of blue there only tiny and just blending it in carefully. I'm not letting the brush go haywire. And you can see just that hint of blue in those spots there. Just the hint. Is that a courier? It's probably picking up. Just the hint is all it needs. 
So find your other places. And see that little bit of blue I just did the smallest amount and I'll show you again on this side just those little lines look at those little lines I just did you can't even hardly see them right okay is it raining it's going to be. oh okay cool so when you're doing this layer you know take your time um, you can still work through this class today and come back and do this, you know, after the class. So take your time. You can, I'm going to go through the legs as well, of course, now. So we've got plenty of time. Um, but yeah, take your time. Come back to it if you want. Because this is, you know, where, you know, your, your kit is starting to come to life and you're giving it its own personality. I can't say enough lately how I've noticed babies coming to life with personality because of their artist's visions and it's really important. Okay, so see that? Just a little bit of bluing there. Now you can obviously see that blue and if I was to sell that baby as it was now that would probably be a little bit annoying, that blue there. But as we go over with other colours and the... Um, uh, the mottling and everything that will just go into an undertone and it will hardly be seen it'll just be seen as a shadow so it's important not to not to shy away from it as well okay so I feel like I'm happy with that as well actually I'll do a little bit more in here Again, remember if you get any blue in the creases, you need to pick it up. Otherwise, it will stay there and it will look like um, someone's drawn on it with a biro. Okay, so next leg. Legs are fun too. Oh, I especially love to give a bit of blue under those toes like you saw I did on the testing limb. I just love that. It always looks so pretty. I know. I carry on sometimes, but that's alright. So just getting under there. And definitely, definitely, definitely holding your brush to accountability. No, that's great. That's fine. Honestly, once once you get all the other colours and the modelling over it, it'll be fine. So we can see. Look at it. These little toes, just like we can just see that they're bluing there, just under the toes. Um, a little bit under here, but not that much. It's not too deep, so we don't need to. I definitely love to go deep in that center part of that foot there. Just do a line. see how it's getting darker now this is one where you can let your brush do its own sort of thing you can let it spread a bit because we're trying to spread in that arch of the foot there now look at that now we can see that there's a definite arch of the foot it's just so pretty. Deb said, question, uh, this has nothing to do with painting, but can you send me some rain? Oh, sure, I'll send you some rain. If I was magical, I could do that. <laughs> okay. So then I'm going to go on to um, the, the ankle. I want to accentuate <laughs> that there is a little bit of an ankle there. So I'm just going to go under where there is or would be an ankle and holding my brush to ransom not going over too much and you can see that there it just shows that little hint of an ankle and on the other side there's a little bit of a down point there So 
so you can just see it it's making it a world of difference and so on the top of the foot there I've got like this end little pinky toe it's poking out that looks like there's be a little bit of a deep look in there you can do between the toes if you like see that Reminder again, if you're going within the toes, that you may need a fan brush or something to get out any excess paint. You really sort of have to look at what you're doing as you're going. See there? And obviously this part is a little bit of a deep section as well. You can see that, just that little deep part. Um, back of legs, definitely, behind the knee. You also want to make sure when you're pouncing on with your brush that you're sort of pouncing straight on. You're not necessarily swiping it out unless that's what you're trying to achieve. Like if you're trying to get that paint to move out that way, you might swipe it. But generally you're just pouncing on there. You can see that that looks, you can see the blue in there and that that looks a little bit deeper. Now once you do all those positions that are obvious, well that's an obvious position there. So just a little bit there. Like I say, once you do all those positions that are a little bit obvious, that's when you need to look at it uh, from different angles, like with the light hitting it, and you will actually see little, little divots here and there. And you can just make them a little bit more featured. Like I can see like that there looks like a, there's a bone up in the middle up here. You can see that there, that that's deeper. And I can do like a little line off to the side, which will make it look even more obvious. You see that? Okay, and then at the top here, I know I can see that there's a little bit of a divot there. You can see it there too in the camera. I'm going to just give that a little bit of a line there. I'm not being shy. And just blend it through. There we go. And it looks obvious, like I say to you, it looks obvious there, but once I go over with my mottling and everything, it won't look as obvious. And I can, like there, there's like a little divot there, just a small divot. I can make that part of it. Just a little bit part, and you can see now, you can see that that is literally a little divot there. You can see that? Okay, so just looking over the leg in all the positions. And just working out anywhere I want to really make shine out. So that's fine with that leg. So I'll go on to my last leg and do the same thing. So like I say, um, when you're working with this, it's best to take your time and really look at it, really see its, its personality and what parts, what features you want to make obvious and shine out. See under the toes there, just looking a little bit darkened there. I can even accentuate 
that little crease there which is quite deep. again. Now, if I could watch everyone put their hand up, who put who wants to put their hand up? And tell me how lovely and quiet it is today without Michael and the kids here. <laughs> oh my god, they did me batty last week. It's nice just to be able to be quiet. So there's the arch of the foot there again. You can see. Now I'll get in the, underneath the ankle. Now for everyone also seeing that I'm using these gloves again, I have to say it's really great to have the glove on and not be worried about putting my finger chemicals and oils from my fingers over the kit and I can hold it really carefully. I don't have to just hold it like this and then you know you're trying to pounce it and it's going boing 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 boing, it's going all over the place like that. I can really control it this way which I have to say is really, really nice. Yes, it's heaps better. It is better, <coughs> isn't it? So, I you know... been kicked in the face. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't been kicked in the face. Good point. Um, so these I do sell on the website, Oz Reborn Supplies. They're just the white gloves. Um, you can find them at some, you know, like some hardware stores and that. I think they just they just call them like cleaning gloves. You know, your, your white dusting gloves, like, I want to see if you've got dust there, that kind of thing. Um, uh, you get when when you buy them from my website, you do get a pair, um, but you really only need to use the one, so you could keep the other one, you know, for when that gets really dirty. But this was obviously from last week, and this week you can see I've got some red on the fingers and that there. But I'll be able to wash them, you know. So it's quite good. So just on his toes, I just did a little bit. Didn't need to do as much on this side as the other side because of the separation. But I do like to try to get in between those separated toes because it would be like a little bit darker being that it's inside between the toes. Make sure that there's no excess paint there. there and now I'm just sort of starting to go for any parts that I'd like to make more obvious and when I say obvious it's not fully obvious it's just that you'll always see them as a little bit of a darker point can even make the knee look a little bit more pointed out by putting a little line on each sort of corner. That works as well. And we can see this one, the um, that bone doesn't look as accentuated as on the other leg. So I'm going to leave that with that one. Again. 
So make sure you look over your kit and that you're happy with everything. You can see the bluing that I've done there. You can see it on the back of the ankle and in this part of the foot. So I'm quite happy with that. Okay, Deb said, question, do I have to wear gloves when painting because I can't wear gloves too long because I sweat and it makes my eczema come out? No, you don't. You definitely don't. Um, you can even put your hands on it if you really want, especially if you're making it for yourself. But if you're making it as, you know, a custom or someone's bought it from you, I really suggest you don't put your hands on it because, you know, as we know, even by just touching the table there, I'm leaving fingerprints. And that's my oil coming out. So I would suggest that if you can't wear gloves that you're just going to have to hold it from the inside like that and really, you know, try to work on it the best you can. It will be fiddly. It will sort of hurt your wrist a little bit, but you can do it. Okay, now teacup, hand me that for a minute. Teacup's going to work on the body now for anyone that has the body. So I would be suggesting to her, obviously, put some blue down that center sternum sort of area there, underneath that breast there. She can do those ones if she wants, unless she doesn't want to eventuate them too much. You might even just want to put a bit of blue in, in that center part. A little blue under here, a little blue underneath the belly button there, and maybe up the top. <coughs> even in those lines would be good. What about the ribs? Do I? If you want, yeah. See, look at those ribs on the side there. See those ribs there? Under, just under each rib. So just a line under each rib and blend it. And then the backbone, you know, either side. See either side here? Yep. And even like you can accentuate that there'd be dimples up the top there. So there and there. Mm -hmm. And just in this sort of center part here. Okay. So that's if you've got a body to work on. I'll just check if there's any other questions at the moment while Teacup's doing that. You can use a rubber glove as well. So I also have... Um, just these these ones here, which a lot of people have anyway. Uh, they're really great to use as well. Um, I've just found personally, for me at this time of year, they are quite... it can get quite hot and sweaty. But they are great as well. My ring is in the way. So you can use either. And, you know, especially with these new, you know, gloves these days, they're so, they're actually quite comfortable, quite comfortable to hold. So you can use both. You can use one or the other. Um, it doesn't matter. Or if you're not, you've just got that little bit of extra work ahead of you. But see, that's how we're coming up now with him. It's so cute. My little Emerson. Okay. Um, so just checking any other questions. The cotton gloves are very thin. Yes, they are. But you don't want them to be thick because you still want to be able to um, feel what you're doing. Uh, that's really, really important. Okay. Where? Mm -hmm. no, that's fine. From where I'm sitting, it looks fine. It is fine. And you know why it's fine? Because it's translucent and it's not that visible. It'll just look like he's got a bit of shade. She has got a bit of shading in that area. Thank you, Karen. Laurie said, I put a bigger paintbrush inside my leg and arm. Yes. So Angela was saying that again last week. So you can put your bigger paintbrush inside your limb like that and it sort of controls it a little bit more um, gives you a little bit more control so thank you very much for saying that Laurie that's a good point as well Nana said what colors did you mix together for the blue for Genesis okay it was just like your either your thylo blue or your ultramarine just like one swipe of one side of the brush swiped in your jar and then swipe onto your little palette and then um, with your odorless solvent I mean probably go with about 10 drops or something like I did with this um, but if you 
do more, that's fine. Just check your translucency against, you know, on your powder on the on your paper towel or on your testing limb, um, blue is really unforgiving and especially with um, some of those Genesis paints, they can be a bit stronger. Have you got air conditioning at all, Deb, that you could just put the air conditioning on for a little bit or a fan on you just while you're working? Thanks, Reborn Under the Sun. Yes, thank you, Heidi. Exactly what you said. Thin meaning not hot to wear. They're not hot to wear. Angel said, I'm using heat set paint and finding that if I pounce it off too quick that I don't get enough colour. If I leave paint on a moment or two before pouncing, it's better. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely that's okay. And I probably should have said that. When you're working with air dry paint, it's not as forgiving as the heat set. So um, you have to, should we just put this back for a minute? I want to knock you off. So with the air dry paint, you really have to put it on and get it off quickly. Um, with the heat set, when I'm working with the heat set um, in a situation, I might have put a little bit of bluing on the eyes, done the blue in the nose, done the blue around the ears and in the mouth, give myself that much time, and then I come on and blend from the first one, second, third, fourth. And sometimes it doesn't matter if you go over it, just like with the air dry. If I didn't like that right now, Add a little bit more blue so you can go over it and over it again um, especially with your heat set because we're not setting it so yes that was a really good point keep going over it or let it sit just let it sit for a few moments it just almost needs time to like leach into the kit and that's why if you've got the right blue the right translucency it's perfect because it doesn't matter if it leaches because it's the perfect color so yeah give it a moment and you can test that. So have your testing limb. If you've got a testing limb um, and you're using heat set, put a little bit of the blue on, give it a moment or two, and then, you know, do your blending to see how it comes off. If you don't have a testing limb, it is good to test that. And I would suggest, you know, down the bottom of the neck there or something, especially if you're going to put hair or painted hair over, um, it can be forgiving. You can get away with it. Or even on your bases of your neck like that, you can use that as a testing point as well. So that's a really good point. Thank you for asking that question. Um, you can either use the Genesis um, Ultramarine Blue or the Thylo Blue. I find either or works fine. If you were to put a gun to my head and said, which colour do you want to use right now? I'd probably go with the Thylo Blue actually. Chopsticks inside the limb is a great idea, Deb. Edie said, Annette, a very well-known artist told me that she uses coconut oil with her heat set paints. Yes, a lot of people will use an oil and that helps them to settle. Um, so you can use coconut oil, you can use linseed oil. Um, there's another oil I can't think at the moment that someone has used. Um, you'll find many of them on YouTube use them. I've used linseed oil before um, but I don't use it anymore. Um, it's just a thought that I didn't I didn't feel I need to. I felt it was fine. But it does help it sit and settle and, and you know settle into the vinyl just that little bit better. Um, so you definitely can use that. Um, but it's really an artist's perspective of what they want to use um, whether they want to use that or not but you can and what you do with that is let's say you were working with Genesis heat set paints now and you did that line of blue there then I would just put like maybe two drops of the oil and mix it together first and then add some of your odorless blue is very unforgivable Heidi said, I killed my baby with the blue, seriously. Oh, no. Don't be too sad about it. Like, I'm sure we can recorrect that. Um, you know, you could even do, uh, if you've got too much blue and it's just too obvious, I think you could do a layer over that of get your colour wheel and do your opposite to your colour wheel. Just do a layer of that afterwards. 
Now, if you're working with heat set planks, I kind of do suggest you go and bake it now, um, just because we don't want to risk those points getting going away. But you can wait if you want, because the next layer we're doing is the yellow, and it's the featured yellow. So as long as you're not sort of overlapping or wiping it off, you could wait if you wanted. Brandy said some use linseed oil on heat set. Coconut would smell better. Oh, yes, it would, wouldn't it? It would, but yeah, you'll find there's heaps of artists on YouTube. I had someone one day that said linseed oil was her, her greatest secret. And then if you go on YouTube, everyone's using it. So it's not a secret. You can use it. Excellent beach baby. Nana said, if we don't think our creases are dark enough, can we add more later? Yes, absolutely. Um, so like we did last week, someone did a layer of the red and they came to me and they said, oh, I don't know if it's red enough. I said, if you don't think it is, add it again. And she showed me it after she added again. Perfect. You know who you are. It was perfect afterwards. It just got that perfect right tone to it. Angel said her hubby's making her a new drying rack that I can take the dowel out with each thing. Oh, that's excellent. So you can hold it. You're welcome, Lee. Celia has a, if, if I have a fan or aircon, I need to add a drop of water as it takes ages because the paint starts to dry. That is true as well. Terry said, I have the starter set and only have vein blue. Is that one okay? You can use that, yes, you can. That would be fine. That was in the Genesis heat set paints. That's fine. Okay. You're welcome, Photo Master Fi. You're very welcome. And has anyone ever used veining markers? I've saw seen on eBay. If they got um yeah, has anyone ever done that? Okay, now we're going to start on our next color. Um, I'm going to wipe away the blue there just because I'm going to wipe my brushes first with the blue. Can we empty that? I've just got a bit of water here so I'm just going to like rinse my brush with the water, get some of the excess blue out. So if you're working with Genesis heat set paints, you can just wipe off, wash off your brushes with the odorless solvent. If you're working with air dry, just some simple water is fine. Um, but if you're using that brush and that brush alone for all of your bluing, then you don't have you just have to give it a wipe off, it doesn't matter. But if you're using it for other colours as well, it's good too. The blending brush, I don't like to get that wet, so just rub that on your mat. Actually, can you, when you've done that, go and get us two more of these blending brushes? Um, as I said, the blue is very unforgiving. So I'm about to work with yellow. And if I was working with yellow and I did the, the blue blending brush over it, it doesn't matter how much I've wiped it off, it'll still come out. So I'm going to get us a, a new blending brush for the yellow. So that's fine. And just washing off my palette there because as we all know this is air dry paint and it will dry and get harder to get off <laughs> see so you I mean you could wash it you know hand wash it in the sink with um you know your dishwashing detergent and it'll get more off but there's really no great need you just need to give it a wipe like that and if you're working with heat set paints yeah definitely wipe it out otherwise it dries and settles and it's harder to get off because of the oil. Okay, that's fine. Rubbish on the ground. <laughs> okay, so now we're working with yellow, guys. Yes, you can strip magical realism work and start over. That's fine. You can just use like your paint stripper like we've, we've done before. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. What are you sharing there, Annie? Been listening and wanted to help. 
Here's an image of the colour wheel. Oh, thank you so much. That's very lovely of you. Thank you. Okay. So get my testing limb out again. Put those up here. Okay, so with the yellow, it's a similar type of deal that we did before. Um, we're going to work with the magical realism, so just the typical yellow. So if you're working with Genesis, you just need um, your Genesis yellow at the moment. So I'm going to, uh, actually, don't forget, give it a little bit of a mix before you start. Just like a soft roll like that. You can even roll it in your hand. You can give it a more of a shake if you want, but I just think it's fine just to do a light rub like that. Yeah, we'll go the small ones, two of the small ones. Small with a wide thing or small with a point? I'll go with whatever we've got most of, because <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to go six drops of yellow. I'm going to bring this down again so you can see very well. Okay, six of yellow. Put that out of the way. One, two, three, four, five. Six. There we go. Six. Yep, you can do. Uh, actually, do five for you. Don't go off what I'm doing with her. It's just her smaller well. And six of the thinning. And just give it up a little little mix there. And I'm going to fill the rest of my paint well with water. It's got a tad of blue in it, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Doesn't that matter? My... No, that's okay. Just give it another wipe off. You're doing me, Sha. How many more Uh, fill the well. Okay. So just to check my paint again before I go on, I've got my little blender here. I've just got my testing limb. I'm just going to go on and see the yellow there and just blend it out. So what we should be looking at there is just like a, a yellow hue, nothing really much. It's, it's almost hard to see, especially on this colour, but you can see that there's a yellowing in there. Okay, so once you're happy with that, you can move on. I'll just do a swipe on my paper towel to show you the translucency of it. What's it supposed to look like on here? Hardly noticeable. See, you can just see, looks a bit yellow there. Yep, and then blend it. It's probably a little bit too much paint mm -hmm. on there, so no, that's all right. It's your tester. You're able to do that. So you should be able. To, yep, that's fine. You can just see it with um with less paint, obviously, it'd be easier. Mm -hmm. I am going to. What am I going to do? You can decide what brush you want to use. I'm going to use both. Um, my little one and my big one there. So with the yellow, it's all about your high points. So it's like the tip of your nose. It's like the tip of your lip just here. The upper part of your ear. The point of your chin. Um, even like these little parts up here that are poking out. So you just look for all of your high points. So just look back and you'll see it. But we start... The key features are definitely the top of your nose, so make sure you get any excess paint off your brush because we don't want it sort of running down the sides of the nose. And just give it a little bit of a spot on the end of your nose and blend it. Um, so sorry, I should go back to the heat set people. Um, with the heat set, with the yellow, just one swipe of yellow on one side and then if you're using your oil or anything, go with that. And then um, let's say half fill your well with the odorless and see how that gives, what kind of translucency that gives you. 
and um, then you can add more odorless if you need a little bit more translucency. And like we heard before, it's best to sort of put with your heat set, put your yellow on, give it a moment there to sit. I've put too much on there. Yep, that's great. Now, this is where if you've got it at the right translucency, it won't be too obvious. So if you want more yellow, do another dot. You just keep doing more dots. Um, if you just want uh, like a hint of yellow, then you stop there. Because that looks like just a hint. You can just see it. So is that how I want it? <laughs> I don't know. How do you want it? I don't know. I, I like it looking like... a little bit more obvious. kind of looks like the paint's being washed off it. No, no, that's fine. You could probably leave it at that. It looks good the way it is. Yeah. If you want to add more, you can. So you can just see that yellow part of the nose there. Oh, so cute. I really like it. So now I'm going to just go, I'm going to do it with my little brush. I'm going to do just a little smidgen just above the lips there. Just like either side. With the little cat whiskers. But that's not important. You might not want to feature that as being yellow. Definitely feature the top of the ears. That high point around the ears. And like I said, if it's not really poking up bright yellow for you, like, well not bright yellow, but the yellow you like, just keep going over it a few times until you're happy. Just look at it from afar. You want to be able to see that yellowing. And sometimes if you're not if you're really not seeing the yellowing come up, it might mean that you might need another drop of yellow if that's what you like. You like more yellow, then go for it. Just add another drop of yellow, add another drop of thinning, whatever you like. Is it working for your teacup? No, it just looks like it's washing it off to me. No, I don't think it's washing it off. It's just highlighting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so cute. As long as you're remembering to just to um, pounce that brush on, not rub it. Got a question? Yeah, photo masterfy. So however you say it. Yep. It says I missed what the yellow was for. The yellow is for your high points. So like your high points, like like the top of a mountain. So the tip of your nose, the tips of your ears. Like for my one, it's a little bit of the tip of that mouth section there tip of the um, chin, anything that you believe to be a high point. And once again, you're the artist, so if you think um, you don't want to really feature that as a high point, don't do it. I've got these little points of the ear, um, ear of the head over there that I think are uh, worth featuring and his chin like that is that too obvious mm, it's it's a tad obvious but being on the head you won't you won't be a bother and don't forget too, if you do get something that's a little bit obvious, a little bit too yellow, you know, when we're working over with the modelling and that, it really will fall behind. Did I make it better? Yes, you did. You absolutely made that better. <laughs> so how did you make that better? I will use the wedge on top. Okay, so she thought she had a spot that looked a little bit too yellow and um, she just got the wedge and sort of, pounced, did you pounce it on? Yeah, yep. and just pounced it on. And that sort of lessened the yellow. So see there. 
So with the whole holding the kit the way I have there, you can really see where you know the red and the blue and the yellow are really starting to shine through. So you can really see those features. The top of the head up here. And then the ear, my ears aren't really taking to it. It's like it just doesn't like it. And sometimes I I think that's a point of view that like it's the baby talking to me. <laughs> you can even do that higher point in the ear just in here. You can give that a little bit more yellow if you like at that point. Because you will notice like in a baby's ear, you know, the high points where the cartilage is, you know, poking out more, you will notice that they're a bit yellow. Now obviously we don't want to go over everywhere. We don't want to make the baby look jaundiced. We just want to give it those highlights that it would have. <clears throat> Definitely finding using this after I put it on is making it look better. Okay, so Teacup is finding her, it's better for her to blend with the cosmetic wedge. Now again, if you're finding your own form of artistry, that's what you need to do. You don't need to follow exactly what I do. What works for me might not work for you. And it is good to test different things. So with her using yellow as her blender, that's fine. It's blending it really nice for her. So I would be suggesting to, you know, give it a try. Try different things that you think work for you. I'm by no means like, you know, some top guru artist. There's some amazing artists out there. And I can guarantee you they're not doing things the way I do it. They've got their own way of doing it, and um, that's great. That's what makes them their, you know, their special artist. Again, with the yellow, put it wherever you want. I'm going a little bit more around the edges of the outer bottom ear there, so that's fine. I'm even going to put a little dot on each cheek just on that highest point of the cheek. Now some may say, well, that's normally like a rosy point. Well, that's fine. I'm still going to give it a rosy cheek. No balls coming out anymore. See this box? Do you want a different blue, a different brush? Yeah. Try maybe this one or this one. That one had a bit of blue on it. Let's try this one. Maybe soak that other one in with some water. Oh, not better. Change the water, you know. Yeah. Let me see how we go. Little Emerson's really coming to life. I'm liking this sponge as well. For, I like it for a mix-up, like if I want the space to be a little bit bigger. Now you can decide on that time whether you want to put it in different places. You can even put it on that eyelid there a little bit if that eye's a little puffy and sitting up a little bit. But you just do the smallest amount. You don't want to over overrun it. Start small and work big. Oh man, it's so cute. I really want to get on that ear a bit more. Do we do the back of the head? No, there's no need. There's no real, real high points there really. See the yellowing of the ear there? See that? 
and even on the cheeks see how I put a little bit of yellowing it's just so fine like it's not it's nothing major Three different shades of yellow on my head. You can talk to Teacup too, but she's working as well, so she might not talk back. What did you have? What was your question? Like the three, these points here. Yep. It's different, they're all different yellow. That's one. Look at that. You can see that again. The yellowing looks really good on that forehead there. Can you swipe up to see Heidi's question? Okay, where have we got? Oh, hang on, we've got Lee has a question. I paint pictures with acrylics thinned with water. Could I use that to paint rebonds? Well, a lot of people are trying it, so I would say definitely give it a go. Why not? Beach Baby said, I thought I read that you have to spend a minimum $100 on Aussie rebond supplies. Is that true? No way. <laughs> what? No. There, there is a... um. Is there something on there that's a discount if you spend $100? No, that's $199. No, no, no point. There's people that buy eyelashes off me for $3.50. Postage is $3. So that would probably be my cheapest thing, I think. So as little as, yeah, that's $6.50. People spend all the time you can buy just one thing. And postage is normally pretty good too on small amount of things. Heidi said, your book says to cover entire kit. Here I go again. I'm doing things different my way, aren't I? Brush. It does too. It does too. Now look at that, hey? I'm doing things differently. This is some way, because I do things differently all the time in different ways. So sometimes I do it this way, sometimes I do it others. Uh, for those who want to what who are going exactly by the book, if you want to go over the whole entire kit, you can. Um, but with this one, this he says her baby looks jaundiced. But with this particular time, I've just done each little pinpoint spot. Um, if your baby looks jaundiced, it's probably the yellow is a little bit too yellow. Um. I must be so far behind. Am I so far behind? Is this book wrong? No, the book isn't wrong. You can do it that way. The book was made just to simplify things, um, you know, for people doing a first time reborn. And yes, I did say I was kind of going by the book, so I'm probably wrong by not doing it there. Um, but this is this is better anyway. If you do it like this, it's a little bit better than the entire entire yellow um, it's up to you if you want to do it either way but it's not wrong it's just based on like like a first time you know learning how to do it it's not wrong book says to use sponges okay everyone's having a go at me now because of the book okay I was trying to take you a little bit further out but hang on I'll go by the book then um, Okay, all right. No, I'm not changing that at the moment. I like the way I've just done that. So if you've gone ahead and done it by the book, then that's fine. You've done full yellow, that's okay. It's, it's, it's fine to do that. It is fine to do that. I have, like the last baby I did when I was doing um, the paints, I did do a full layer of yellow and he did turn out amazing. But with this one, I decided to feature the yellow, made it more of a feature. Well, no insert. Um, you don't have a book, that's okay. You're trying to get my attention. That's so sweet, Heidi. Hi, I love you. I'm getting jitter. That's all right, it just confuses me that. But I like it, Heidi. If I it call me out, if I do do things differently, I like that. Okay, I really like that. So that actually allows me to tell anyone that has the book, you can go by the book. And the yellow one does say in my tutorial um, to pounce over the whole entire kit um, with the sponge. Who's calling me? Deb says, do you have to do yellow? No. You know what? You don't have to do yellow. A lot of people don't like 
the yellow. They might think it looks too jaundiced or they might just not like kits with yellow. It's just like veins. You don't have to do it. It's what you want to do and that's what makes you the artist. Like seriously it does. Um, like you could literally skip, like let's say with the um, mottling. Um, sometimes when I mottle, I use like eight to ten different shades of colour for mottling. Um, but the next one I might only use two. And the baby will come out just as nice, different, but just as nice as the one I did with the eight to ten. So that's what makes you an artist by going about and making things your own way. Um, you don't have to follow how I do it exactly here. You can change it. And that's why sometimes it's good that you, if you're not painting along with me because you can change the way you want it to go. Look at me, I've already been a rebel and not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, most artists break the rules. That's absolutely. So if you're going by the book, that's great. Your baby will still turn out beautifully. Uh, but it's a guide. Uh, it's an absolute guide and you can change it. You can absolute change it. So now, yeah, look at that, eh? That must be the because of the dry, you know, the blue made dry from last week. Okay, so now with this little guy, I'm going to go on to his hands. Now, again, we're going with those high points. Gee, gee, I'm doing well today. Um, we're going to go with those high points. We're not going to go on with veins today because we're almost at two hours. We're 20 minutes off veins. Mm. So, and I don't want to keep everyone confused for too long. So today we're just doing the yellow and the blue. We'll start on the veins next week and I'll talk about that towards the end of this where we're up to. I promise, see I promised people from the beginning that I'd only do it for about two hours and that's because many of you are really late at night and probably thinking, oh, I want to get to a bed in it. Okay, but you can come back and watch more later. So with the yellow, again, we're going for high points on the um, hands and the high points I would say are like your top of your knuckles um, or, you know, your top here. So this part of the hand or the knuckles, um, your elbow, anything that is a high point. So I would normally go over the fist like this. Even when I've got open hands, I would do that as well. So just go like that. I'm liking the sponge at the moment and I think I'm liking the sponge because this blending brush is a little bit tighter on the end than my other one. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. So this one was a little bit loose when this one's a little bit tighter. But with this particular part of the yellow, I want it to be a little bit more loose. So I'm going to go with the sponge like teacup advised. And see, I want you to take note of that too. Teacup, this is her first baby she's made. But I can still take what she's done as advice. You know, she said that's worked better for her. So I thought, hey, give me a go at that, you bugger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I worked out that it worked better for me at that point too. So you need to try different things. And don't just listen to someone because they've been painting for years. Listen to your own intuition and go with what you think works well is working well for you. So see just that yellowing on those knuckles there? It's bringing that highlight that there's a little bit of pressure on the end of the baby's knuckles. So those high points are almost like a pressure point. Would there be one on the wrist there? You could put one there, yep. Now you, you'll see from time to time too, I still do touch my kit with my hand, very unprofessional. Um, but you know, I'm human, I make mistakes too, um, but I don't sort of dwell on them, I just think about them and try not to do them again. Um, but you know, it's obviously best not to touch your kit, kit with your bare hand, but if you do, don't knock yourself up about it, it's fine.
I love making that elbow nice and yellow and highlighted. So what do you say we do with yellow uh, open hands again? Um, for this open hand, I would like to sort of still do all, especially that knuckle. That yep. one doesn't look like it's got as much pressure on it, so probably not that one. Definitely the thumb. And maybe you could even do like the edge of the tip of the finger there. And then inside the tip of that thumb, and like just this part of the, the hand inside there. It's sort of poking up. I'll just give you a little look at that and you can see those yellowing parts just along here top of the fingers there uh, I've got down here on the side of that of that thumb and on the knuckle of the thumb and I'll put a little bit here as well You know, if you, if you think about reborns and, you, and you're looking at um, someone else's work, you'll find, you know, like it's almost like no two works are the same. You know, they'll always have the different, differentiated, dif they're different. <laughs> <laughs> they're different, you know, from the last artist. And that's why, you know, some people, you know, look down their nose at certain artists for doing things different ways. I'm just going to go along that bone there and see that there's a bone. But, you know, they shouldn't because... You should never look down at other people's artists. You know, they've come a long way at, at where they've gone most of the time. And they should be encouraged for what they're doing. Now the top of the shoulder there looks like it's poking up a bit for me. So I'm going to give it a bit of yellow. Now if you're going by the book, obviously you've just gone over the entire kit with the yellow. And it should just, it really shouldn't look jaundiced. It should just like look like a yellow hue like that you can see like in certain angles it shouldn't be something that's you know scary jaundice alien like okay so i'm going on to my next hand which is very similar to the first so we'll just do over the knuckles again And thank you for everyone, um, thank you for, sorry for Julia, for sharing my website again. Um, just to let you know, for anyone, there's a couple of people that are waiting on the Magical Realism paints um, to be sent out their kits. Um, we're just waiting on a new shipment which is supposed to arrive this morning. And so any of those shipments will be created, I'll create this afternoon and get in the mail today. I apologise, um, it should have been here by now. So I apologise that you've had to wait, you know, for that. Um, but anyone that has been waiting longer, I always send a little bit, bit of a thank you bonus for your patience. Because um, I know sometimes it's not that you're getting frustrated with me. It's more so that you're just so excited to get in and paint. And I can completely understand that. So we'll just send you a little bit of an extra bonus for being so patient. Pretty much at this stage when I get the paints in, um, by the time I've got them and made them into the paints that I need, I already need to order a, a, new, a new shipment. So I'm, I'm very lucky that my um, lady that I buy them from is really quite quick um, in posting and getting onto things for me, but you know, then you've got to, you've got to wait for the postage system to be nice. <laughs> So sometimes it just gets a bit delayed. <clears throat> Does it matter that some of my limbs are more yellow than the others? No. No. So you are you saying you've done two legs and one leg looks yellower than the other, something like no, that? No, like even my, my arms look yellower there yep. than on, the, on this one. 
No, that's not a problem at all. It's just like if you probably look at, you know, our two arms in the same position, you know, one right. might be darker than the other. And okay. So it's just telling me he's talking to me, is it? You said he again. No, I said it. Oh. This time. <laughs> I thought I heard he. Who am I, who am I to tell it what it is? <laughs> exactly. I know. <laughs> Now, some people might think that's funny um, or weird, but I do really fully believe that these things, like, talk to us. It's, and it's how they get their little spirits and, and little personalities in the end. Try to believe in that and, and focus on what you're feeling, what you're thinking, because I can guarantee you, you know, your hands are probably being moved by greater forces anyway, so just go with what you think. Emerson Oki is looking great, isn't he? So I didn't tell everyone before, but that's his middle name, Oki. Just how Lorraine has spelt it there, Emerson Oki. So she, it is a Chase kid, but she wanted a baby um, with the name, you know, with the beginning initials, well, to the initials E and O. Um, and she let me name him. And I kept hearing him say Emerson. So sometimes you've got to go with what your baby is telling you their name is even though you don't like it. But I loved Emerson, absolutely loved it. Why not do the yellow on this one? Probably just, you know, like around that bottom of the belly, yeah, that high point. Yeah. You know, even up the top of, yep, those, top of the breast there, yep, yep. Maybe top of the butt cheeks. Up here. And the point at the actual bum, further down, yep, on either side. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Can I be right to say that you're ahead of me at the moment, <laughs> Tika? Yes. Wow, look at that. Look, you go. Okay. So you can see the yellowing in that elbow there. And then in the fist there. I'm finding... Can I tell you? Yeah. When I use the sponge, mm -hmm. it's not getting a more... The yellow's not coming out as much, but when I use the brush, it's coming more yellow. Okay. So where I want it more yellow, I'm using the brush, and okay. when I want it less yellow, I'm using it. Okay. Thank you. Does that make sense? It right? does make a lot of sense, and I really thank you for saying that because it is, it is important. Um, and she has already figured that out herself, which, like, again, I'll say that it's her first baby. I'm just going to tell you guys that I'm going to go on those little toes there, up on the toe tips. I really like that look. They will, I will go over them a little bit later with red as well. But I do like the feature of the yellow on the toes. Once again, that's what I like. <laughs> Someone else might hate that idea and go, oh, Christ, that I hate that in it. And that's okay. And actually, like my yellow is working really well, but I probably could have put like maybe a half a drop to another drop of yellow in it. And I think it would have been a little bit more, like have you seen that I've gone over this like a few times? Like I'll do the yellow, blend it, I'll do it again, blend it, do it again, blend it. It might have lessened the amount of times I had to blend it had I added more. So you really have to sort of, you know, see those signs for yourself and work with them. I also love to do the heel of the foot yellow. It always looks really nice yellow. And at the end, for anyone who wants to do it, I'll be doing... The little injection point, I don't know what it's like in other countries, but here in Australia, um, when babies are born, they get their vitamin K injection in their heel of their foot, like a little, and they get the little heel prick thing test. Um, it's not, no, they're just, it's just a heel prick te test, it's not a yeah. vitamin K. Is it vitamin K? Vitamin K goes in the leg. In the leg, okay, I'm thinking about something else. But they do get the heel prick test, 
um, when they're born and they have that little point um, where they've had the test and I, I love doing that on my reborns. So towards the end of um, when we've done all the painting, I'll be doing a couple of little feature items like that, the heel prick test, um, maybe a scratch, just to show everyone how to do it. Um, it won't be a factor that you have to do it. Um, I would love to do a scratch on the face because they always scratch their they face. They do scratch their face, yeah. So it's nice to know what you're doing with that. Also with the foot, it's nice to do along that edge of that foot there a bit yellow because it always is like a, like a pressure point you'll find with a baby. My grandson isn't here yet for us all to stare at every feature, but don't worry, he will have to show everything off. Except his little pishka, which is Ukrainian for penis, just saying. I won't show that off, obviously. So you see the edge, the heel, I've done a bit yellowing along that edge of the foot on that side, the outer edge, and the toes. Teacup, you're amazing. <laughs> that is brilliant. Have I had any questions? Any more questions? I can't move the screen like you can, so I don't know. I tried to do it before. I don't know how. Oh, yeah, there we is go. there a little sidebar on it? Yeah. I also like to do a little bit of a highlight on the ankle itself because that is obviously poking out at us. <coughs> Beach Baby says that one of her friends just had a baby at 28 weeks and her named her son Emerson. Oh, that's wonderful. 28 weeks. I hope everything is going well for them. You can see that ankle there being more highlighted with the yellow. It's really pretty. And of course I'm going to go right on the tip of that knee there. No, no questions. No questions, we're all good. Okay, so I'm, I'm keeping on going on this for a little bit more. I've got one more leg to go. But if anyone has any questions, now's a really good time to ask because Teacup is sitting here and she can help answer them because she is like the bomb and has finished her baby for today. Still doing that little side there. Um, next week we're going to be starting with veins. The veins will take a little bit of time. And then we're going to be starting doing some mottling. So very excited. <laughs> oh no, Teacup does not like this mottling sponges. We'll try to make them nice for you. <laughs> do, I don't no, know how, but I don't know. We'll try. I was going to say, do a little love heart. No, that's not <laughs> So like I did last week, I shared a picture of Teacup's progress and my progress on the um, events page. Um, that's always really good for you to refer to how different we've made them over the week. This looks amazing, I really love it. Um, so that will give you more of an insight into how we're going and you can follow along with us along the way. Um, I'd love to see your progress too. Don't be shy, don't be scared. If you're proud of your baby and you just want to show it off, that's the place to do it. We're all in the same position, even those who have done more work on reborning. You know, like, I have to tell you, each baby I make, it, I have got a lot of confidence, but I still have that hint of anxiety in me that you think, is this baby going to be okay? Am I going to mess it up? So I don't think, you know, that... You should always be humble and know, you know, that you can make mistakes 
and that if you do, you know, that's not a bad thing. You know, we all make mistakes. We're all human. And, you know, I would say even the best artists at times make mistakes. So don't feel, you know, bad about that. Be proud about what you're doing and, you know, you're making the first step. In many, in many cases, you're making the first step to doing better. Tina had another grandbaby born today, six pounds. Nice and healthy baby boy, number eight grandchild. Life is good. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. So don't, another thing too, if you have questions and you're you know a little bit nervous to ask online, I know we have a lot of ghost viewers here, and that's okay too. You know, don't feel bad about that. Some people are just afraid, you know, a bit nervous or they have anxiety or such to speak and ask questions out front. They feel that someone might think that they're silly, so they tend not to ask the question. Well, I guarantee you, I'll never think you're silly. So if you're like that. Feel free to send me a question, you know, after the stream, either an email or a message on the Facebook page. Um, my email address is aussiereborn-supplies at live.com.au. Don't feel funny. I won't think you're silly. Everyone, you know, we have to ask questions if we're trying to learn something, just like when you're at school. You asked your teacher what one plus one equals and they helped you, hopefully, unless they were nasty teachers. Um, so that's what I'm here for. I'm happy to help. And just like a doctor, your question will remain with me privately. I won't go publicly announcing it. Um, if, if there's something that you did that I thought was good to speak about, I might speak about, but I would never say your name. Uh, like I said, there was uh, one of you lovely people come to me this week, showed me your kit, and you asked if it was a little bit too pale. And I said, well, if you like it that way, keep it that way. But if you think it's a bit pale, do the whole lesson again. Go over it. And they did it. They come back to me and their baby was superb. So um, you, can, you can ask questions, and, uh, but I will never name names. Your privacy is safe with me. And, um, yeah, that's how we're going. So I'm happy with that, with my leg. And with the colouring of the yellow on it. So I'll put that aside and see if there's any questions to answer at the moment. Is it complicated to mail to the US? No. No. Very, very easy. Uh, and Angie has asked before, will I, will I be doing a scratch on the face? Yes, I absolutely will. And he asks, are we allowed to talk oh, to teacup? If you're a teacup fan. She's very, very shy. And no, not complicated to mail to the US at all. I probably, well, packages all over the world, I probably send about 10, 8 to 10 a day going out over the world. Uh, I send from everywhere, from the Netherlands, Norway, UK, US, um, Brazil, uh, all over the world. So it's very easy, um, depending on what you're sending. But I, could, I send babies overseas and they're fine. Angela said, finished painting baby for now, back to painting the bus. Good on you, Angela. Okay, for my rebonds, that's fine. I don't have 25mm eyes, I have 24mm, so the difference would be so minute it wouldn't matter. So yes, I'll say yes. Still waiting for your box. No, I'm not coming in a box, that so won't never happen. Thank you so much, Julia, for sharing my email address. Don't forget at the end, you know, just clean up your paints and everything, uh, your brushes, um, clean them up. Um, so next week we're going to be starting on the veins, like I said, um, and then after the veins we're going to be going to the mottling, which is very exciting. 
Um, now, the baby already is amazing, but it's still got a lot more um, life to come to, so you'll see a lot of change. Um, but stick with me. I'm going to finish this off today, like I said, because two hours is kind of the limit I gave us, so I didn't want to um, put anyone to sleep. Heidi said, trying to neutralise blue with some orange. Okay, good idea. That is a great idea. <laughs> I love you too, Annie. So I will, that was it for me today. Any questions, don't forget you can ask me after the stream. Um, I'll be making up my link for the next week's lesson later, hopefully later today. <coughs> but I've got some baby work to work on today I want to get to. So I don't know when. But it will be done soon and I'll share any information that you may need um, on our events page. So just checking. You're very welcome, Read One Under the Sun and Laurie and Maxine. Tina said, Annette, <coughs> I'm nervous of doing an open eye baby. Are you doing one at the moment with this lesson or just coming to do it? Because when we get to the stage where we're doing eyes or putting eyes in, I will be sort of talking through those people that have open eyes baby of how to do it. Obviously, he doesn't have open eyes, but I will get a baby and help you through it the best I can, okay? So hopefully that will help. Thanks, Heidi. Hi, thank you so much for, you know, pulling me up on those things. I do appreciate it. Much that people think I don't, I absolutely do. Photo Masterfy, you're very welcome. You're very welcome, Beach Baby. Terry, yours says open eyes. I will help you through, don't worry. And even if you have any questions anyway, I would help you through after the class if I didn't get through. That's okay. I wasn't talking to many people today, Annie, with the classes. I don't have time to talk to anyone. Um, so I tend not to stay away from that. Lorraine said, bye everyone, see you all next week. Love watching Emerson come to life. I love it too, it's great. See you everyone. Holly, thank you. Bye Sonia. Bye Edie, bye Brandy. Oh, okay, on the event page, Brandy said, can everyone critique my dragon? I won't be mad, I promise. Okay, great, we will do. Good night Angie and Celia. Great, I'm glad, glad you think it's a great class. Thank you again, Julia. Mwah. Thank you for all your hard work you do for me. I do appreciate it. Bye, Edie. Bye, Terry. Oh, Terry said, everyone, before you go, be sure to like this live. Oh, thanks, guys. Bye, Nana. Bye, Angela. Bye, Reborn Under the Sun and Tina. Mary Bet, you're very welcome, and Lilas. See you all next week, guys. Great class, you did great. <laughs> Holly said, "Bye, teacup. Your baby is gorgeous." Thanks. Don't forget, she said, "Thank you." Don't forget to look afterwards this afternoon. I'll